Hey, well, welcome back to the Cube's coverage here in New York City, the New York Stock Exchange. My name is John Furrier, host of the Cube and co-founder with Dave Vellante. We're here in New York City opening up our East Coast location on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange where all the action business technology come together. Bernie Malwin is here, founder and CEO of JetCool, uh, helping us all get better horsepower in our servers and data centers, new AI systems. Bernie, thanks for coming on the Cube. appreciate you. Absolutely, John, thanks for having me. So, um, obviously we cover a lot of, you know, cool, liquid cooling is a big part of the innovation right now in um, making sure we have servers. Power and cooling, <laughs> two of the hottest areas. You're in one of them. <laughs> so, talk to, what does JetCool do? Let's set the table, set the context, explain uh, what you guys do. Yeah, absolutely, John. So, you know, we do liquid cooling for our data centers, direct to chip liquid cooling. Uh, and we're really involved in data centers that are looking to densify compute especially those bringing on the latest generation of AI, where we power the latest generation of GPUs, uh, and also save about 20% of the data center's electricity. So we all know that we're constrained. Anyone in the industry has been following the CapEx build out. It's been a tsunami of just spend. It's a CapEx war. All the big cloud guys are doing it. But also the data center workloads are now being retrofitted. You're seeing the data center vibe come back, but it's kind of cloud operations, which means the work that NVIDIA has done and all the semiconductor guys have built better chips Custom silicon now is going to be the rage. So you're seeing a lot more big iron systems, if you will, get built. And, and yeah, I use that metaphor to the mainframe days, big iron, but that's what's happening. The idea of stacking servers up on a rack in a data center uh, with a top of, top of rack switch is over. You're starting to see uh, the new servers be systems with a zillion servers with a lot of interconnects. Um, again, this is the new architecture for Gen AI. It's not just GPUs. It's TPUs, it's XP, all, X, all PUs, X, XPUs. So a lot of components now are coming into this new system design because the demand for AI is so hot and the applications need this horsepower. Essentially supercomputing has yeah. been democratized and available to the masses in a data center footprint. Okay, great. Hey, rah, rah, and more cat videos and more hard problems to solve like uh, you know climate change. But the, there's one pro couple problems, power, and cooling. <laughs> you don't want these things to get really hot. This is what you guys do. So take us through what you what your value proposition, what your, what's your solution? Yeah, so yeah, absolutely, it's a great point because what we're seeing is, you know, uh, you know, just a few years ago, the average rack power was, you know, less than 20 kilowatts. And today, you know, with NVIDIA's NVL72, that's now 120 kilowatts. At Jekyll, we're doing things that are 300 kilowatts in a, in a single rack. Uh, so the power is going through the roof and for all the reasons that you just mentioned. Uh, what we do at Jekyll is we bring a specialized liquid cooling uh, where we're actually, we, our solutions uh, attach onto the CPU or the GPU device and we bring an array of fluid jets uh, and those jets are targeting the hotspots on, on the individual silicon. So thinking about all the XPUs that you mentioned, John, uh, we have solutions that target the hotspots on each of those individually, yeah. whether you're working with Intel or AMD or NVIDIA or some other uh, solution. And by really focusing on the hotspots of that silicon, we can do a better job of, of cooling that. I'd actually have a little, little prop here. Yeah, absolutely. This demo? So, yeah, so this is a demo. This is actually a solution for, up the camera. Uh, for the H100 product. Uh, this is one of our cooling modules for, for NVIDIA H100. And inside of this uh, is really uh, something that we call the jet plate. That's this guy here. Uh, so this whiz bang is, is you know, creating those arrays of little tiny fluid jets. There's 700 little fluid jets uh, that are targeting the hotspots on, on the processor. So, you know, us old school, guys and gals who build their PCs know what a heat sink is. <laughs> Remember the old days you keep that? That's right, yeah. Um, it yeah. feels like it's a similar kind of configuration, but not really. Or is it kind of the same town? Yeah. Footprint, but you're using your tech with the jet packs. Exactly cool. right. So, I mean, from the outside, think of it as exactly that. Uh, so it's you know the same kinds of things that people are familiar with, but inside it's really different. Yeah. Because inside, instead of a channels, we have these arrays of, of tiny jets. And you can see, you know, you know very uh, you know, miniature jets that are uh, uh, perforated into that uh, device. So you can see arrays of, of non-uniform yeah. nozzles yeah. Uh, that are being uh, generated to, to target the hotspots on that silicon. This is awesome engineering. Explain the secret sauce. How does it work? Take us through some of the uh, intricacies. Yeah, so you know, at, at, at a core level, uh, we're using jets that have flow that's perpendicular to the surface of the process that you want to cool. A lot of other liquid cooling approaches just flow liquid over a surface, parallel to the surface. And uh, you get these uh, boundary layers that develop of slow moving fluids. But for us, we take that fluid and we turn it 90 degrees, right? 
Uh, so we can surgically remove the heat from those hotspots uh, with flow that's crushing the boundary every, boundary layer every. So you're monitoring surface area, and you identify it. Do you like pulse it with some cooling? I mean, is that how it works? I'm over. Yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. We, so we do uh, we, we do target those hotspots, right? Uh, you know, there's not a lot that goes on uh, kind of in real time because workloads can change very quickly. Um, but we're we're mapping out those hotspots and we're targeting them with these uh, with these clusters of gens. All right, explain the company history, origination, mission, how it's evolved, how you guys got here. Yeah, so you know the company is about six years old uh, at, at Jetcoal, and you know we we actually spun out of MIT, uh, where I've been working the technology for ten or twelve years. Uh, it started actually in aerospace, so we were doing things for, uh, for defense, and. Um, you know, back back then we were cooling thousand watt plus devices when nobody cared about thousand watt devices. <laughs> yeah, you had one customer. Yeah, no yeah. So, so, so we've been doing that for a long time, uh, and then we spent out uh, to focus on what we thought was a real opportunity, not just to uh, focus on high powered devices. AI wasn't really a thing back then, um, but also to do better for the planet because uh, in the end we help uh, reduce the electric yeah. electricity consumption. Yeah, and so when you when you guys spun out of MIT. Obviously, still was need for for the for the providers of hardware to have some cooling. Um, what's been the catalyst? What's been some of the key moments for you in the company? Yeah, well, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, adoption in liquid cooling. You know, really in the past two and a half years, it's really gone crazy. Uh, a lot of that's been driven by AI. Uh, it's been driven by densification of compute. It's also been driven by uh, power budgets. So even as we think about uh, uh, our, a lot of our customers in financial services. Uh, they have co-location space where they might only have 10 or 12 kW per rack. Yeah. And by using our liquid cooling, uh, they can get the higher powered chipsets, but they also reduce that power consumption of the server 15 or 20%. Uh, and what that means is that in a fixed power budget, every seven servers, you can get an eighth one in for free. Yeah. And they have the math on that too. They know what that translates to the business value. Exactly. Uh, on, um, on your guys' journey, funding status, were you guys obviously funded? What's the plan there? How well are you guys doing? Are you guys looking for more capital? Um, what's the what's the business plan? Yeah, so we're we're a venture backed uh, a company. We have great investors, uh, including folks like Bosch, uh, Raptor Capital, uh, Incutel is an investor with the company. Uh, so we have a, a great backing uh, that allows us to do some really great things in in this space and advanced electronics. What's some of the engineering guys you guys have? Are you looking for for um, data people, physical engineering? What's some of the engineering disciplines that you guys tend to look for in your team? So you know, we have uh, very specialized technology, so we're always looking for great uh, engineering talent, especially uh, you know, mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, some electrical engineering. Uh, those are the key areas for us as we build out some very advanced fluid dynamics to cool these And, who, and who's your customers now? So the, the manufacturers? Who's your target customers? Yeah, so we, we span all the way from uh, uh, from end users in the financial services industry, for example, uh, to OEMs. We have a great partnership with Dell, uh, all the way up to the chip makers. Uh, and of course, we work with chip makers uh, collaboratively because we have to for mapping out hotspots too. Talk about the Dell relationship. How's that going? Uh, we have a great partnership uh, with with Dell. Uh, so with with Dell, we're able to combine our liquid cooling solutions with some custom software that they develop to really optimize the efficiency of their servers. And uh, we've had great success uh, with that partnership and their customers uh, reducing power consumption. Dell's done a good job on the AI. They see the future. Absolutely. Michael Dell has pivoted successfully in every inflection point. When the web came along, they were doing mail order, then it goes direct online. I'm expecting the AI PC and these new servers to be very configurable. Absolutely. I think having that power envelope, to me, that's a big advantage right now. Where's the puck going? If you, to use the analogy, skate to where the puck is going uh, by Wayne Gretzky. Uh, for you, as you look at your business and you're navigating the landscape, what's your 20 mile stare out in the landscape? Where do you want to be? Well, we'd love to follow the model of the great one, we, uh, yeah. Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> so, you know, I think as we look at the densification of compute, right, uh, you know, we see just the, the, the need to conserve power and get that same densification, densification of compute out. You know, you look at uh, Google's talking about gigawatt scale data centers, right? That's, that's the power consumption in, of the city of San Francisco. So. You know, all of a sudden, if you can cool uh, those and save 20% of the electricity, you could power a nearby city uh, with the savings that you could have for some of these data centers. So we see an increased uh, 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 efforts on reducing the power consumption because of the stress on power budgets. You know, one of the things I want to get your thoughts on and something I've been riffing on, and I want to riff with you if you don't mind. You know, obviously the NVIDIA is the world. Clearly the data centers target customer for you, you guys, and that's where the action is right now. 
But if you look at the what's happening, we're almost going back to the client server uh, revolution because the data processing aspect of AI is that you got the edge devices, yeah, um, and you can move data around and post data, co-locate data. So you get more storage everywhere. Companies like IBM, Dell, and those all have good storage solutions. So okay, but I could have a massive supercomputer-like capability, which is what's happening mm -hmm. now, whether it's cloud or on-prem. But I can also push content and have replica data or have highly available data and, and at high availability at the edge. Mm -hmm. So edges could be more powerful devices drawing power. Yeah. So I imagine a world where you have all these connected devices getting more capabilities, hence more power requirements, and obviously would need smaller footprint for you guys. So as you see that future, that's a more of a systematic power envelope. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Because I think this is where also cooling might come into handy. That would change the form factor. Yeah, you know, it's a really good point, John, because you know there's there's a couple of dynamics there. We're seeing a, we're seeing increased interest in, in that. You know, as you start start to think about not just training of core LLM sets, but you start to think about inference at the edge, right, and moving that further out. And that poses different problems because you're not going to have a giant liquid cooling infrastructure if you're working at the edge. Uh, and so one of the things that you know, we think is an enabling technology there uh, that Jekyll offers is uh, our self-contained liquid cooling. So we build entire liquid cooling solution systems that fit inside of a computer server box. So you can deploy them in any air-cooled environment. You don't need to make the investment. And that's a way that you know, people are now pushing those high power computing, those uh, uh, you know, inference at the edge farther out without having to make significant yeah, investments. I think, I think distributed computing is going to come down to physical footprint challenges that I've said it before was overlooked because you just put it in a data center. That's right. Or in an office. That's right. All right, what's next for you guys? What's on the plan um, for you? What are some of your goals? Oh gosh, well, it's a, it's a busy time I check, <laughs> right? So uh, we're undertaking a globalization effort now. So, you know, a lot of our business for the past six years has been domestic in the U.S. Obviously a lot of resurgence to, uh, uh, internationally, uh, including in Europe uh, and in parts of Asia. So we are expanding our operations now uh, globally. As you sit in your uh, executive and board meetings, what's your conversations like? What are you investing in? Well, we're, we're investing in uh, making liquid cooling easy to, to access, right? Uh, so we're investing in partnerships. We're investing in, in distribution. We're investing in uh, new product offerings that allow that complete solution to be deployed anywhere, whether it's a large facility or whether it's an edge uh, application. Well, Bernie, I really appreciate you and congratulations on great technology. Uh, we need it. I'll give you the last word. Talk to the camera. The folks watching could be students to hire, engineers to hire, customers to, to work with. Give the pitch, give the plug for the company. Absolutely, no. Uh, thanks for having me, John. And you know, it's a great time in this uh, in this industry. Uh, we're always interested in hiring uh, talented individuals uh, in engineering uh, that can help change the world and have a better impact uh, by reducing power consumption. Bernie, thanks so much. Thanks for joining the cube. Okay, I'm John Furrier here, at the New York Stock Exchange. This is our Cube East location, bringing all the innovation as technology and Wall Street come together. This is where the action is here on the East Coast. Thanks for watching.